Yeah. Do things. Exactly. All right. right, all right. Welcome everybody. We're gonna get cooking in just a minute. Ah. Whoop whoop. I look, like I'm in, I look like I'm in an interrogation room. What's going on? Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm hey, feeling like, vote. no, no, It man. is voting day, you know. There so is like, voting. I feel like Raphael's going to go, tell me your day's code. I'm like, uh, uh, <laughs> five, two, one, two, three. There's this weird light going on. It's so annoying. Hey, doctor, it's a great day to be an American. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Thank you for your service. Oh, yeah. Everyone on the call, uh, thank so you for your everybody service. Everybody can do it. Thank you, buddy. All right, everybody can, I think everybody can chat to everyone, right? We got, we got 28, or, well, on timers, we're, we're running, I'm running up against it today. So uh, we'll welcome everybody. We will, uh, oh, wait a minute, that's not what I want to do. Continue without audio, got it. That way I can see everybody. Well, hey, hey, before we get, so, so first things first. Welcome, everybody. We will get to it in just a minute because I'm excited about everything. We're going to do things differently today. Uh, I change, I'm changing things up every time we do this. So, uh, but I think everybody can text to everyone, right? Everyone can, can go to everybody, say hello. That would be lovely. Can you, can you do it? I, I want to make sure all the chats, let me see. Did I do it? Okay. Everyone can do it to everyone. All right. So the question of the day, the question of the day is not and this this is probably going to be a, an inflammatory thing this voting ah. oh my gosh everybody just freak out now that dave's talking about voting now first of all go vote that's an important thing right i don't care who you vote for but the big question today is number one where are you from and the the nuclear question is here it is you ready for this rafa i am nuclear this is nuclear do you have your cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving from the can, directly from the can, or do you create it from the, you know, create your own thing homemade, or do you just take it right out of the ocean spray can with all the ridges and lines and everything on it, or do you create your own? So where are you from? And this is going to be the most polar, <laughs> polarizing question of the day. Because I'm telling you, the people are passionate about whether or not the cranberry sauce is all natural or whether it comes from the can and you get to be able to slice it up. I'm telling you, it is it is that way. So there you go. So that's the question. So Greg Clark, what is yours? Cranberry sauce is terrible. Oh. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Ocean spray. Ocean, forgive, forgive us, Ocean uh, Spray people who are on the call. Oh my gosh. I do not like cranberry sauce. I'll give you, yeah. if you think that's a hot take, are you sitting down? Get out. Okay. No more. Bacon's not that great right. either. What? Bacon uh, isn't that great either. You're totally not American. I know. Well, very un-American. Uh, uh, very un-American. You should be, you should be, you should be, uh, you should be absolutely banned from voting today. Just saying. <laughs> no voting for you. I voted two weeks ago. Oh, see that? Early voter and everything. All right, guys. So let us know in the chat. Where, what do you got? What's your favorite? Hundred percent. You agree with Greg? Lindsay, you got to go away too. Oh, there it is. Glenn right. Smiley. Yeah, ocean spray out of the can. Can't stand Danny can't. I didn't realize yeah. that there was a third option that people didn't really like cranberry sauce on Thanksgiving. And there's totally, I'm telling you, total un-American people here. Well, can I speak? Go ahead. I would have cranberry sauce with everything that I ever ate. Oh, see that? And if There's you want, and if, and if you want cram, good cranberry sauce, I get in my car and I drive to Fresh Market, and I get the cranberry sauce at Fresh Market. If you eat their cranberry sauce, you'll never pull. You'll never, never grab a back. can. Of, you'll never open a can. Op a can opener again. So wait a minute now. Are you telling me that's fresh and has the cranberries mixed into it? Yep. That's it against my religion. I'm not doing that one it, either. It was the it's the best. <laughs> All so right. You, you agree with me, Dave? It's terrible. I no, I agree that that type of cranberry sauce is terrible. I my I disagree. That, so first of all, it should be out of the can. That's the only natural way to eat it is out of the can. <laughs> all right. Now that we've totally exploded with everybody and made everybody total polarized from this election day on exactly what's happening. Let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen. We got folks here today. 
um, that that uh, that we want to talk about what just happened. I was not here last month, and Rob Rob Lundholm from Sam Radar filled in for me. Thank you, Rob. You there? I think you're there. You can share. Out. Sorry about your Phillies, there, man. That's uh, all right. Nah. Eagles are undefeated. You can. <laughs> what's that? Our Eagles are undefeated. The Eagles so. are undefeated. There he is. He's coming alive now. <laughs> all right. So what just happened in use it or we had use it or lose it spending in, in September that ended because why is that, Greg Clark? Why does why do they have to spend every dollar? So they get their budget next year. So they get their budget next year. That's right. And here's what it looks like. We, we did a, a FY 2022 spend summary, and we're going to make this available later. If you would like to stick around, we have a couple of reports that we will give away for free. Rob, you didn't even know that you were giving away stuff for free, did you? <laughs> Something he did new not. every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, uh, but you can take a look. There's 116,501 total vendors that won an average of $5.1 million. We love that. And you can see it's almost 600 billion rafael marrero billion the billion that's right <laughs> Be so, so 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 what happens now sally white what happens now it starts over again that's it starts right. all over again which is why we're here that's so why we're here if you missed out on 2022 2023 is a new year and we're Rinse here and repeat that's right and, and i sent this out yesterday to ask the question about <laughs> this this right here and we're going to talk, we're going to talk, we have three hot seat questions today. But the first one is, were you one of the 16,561 companies at the bottom of this in October? Craig, Greg Clark, everybody's saying, it's a continued resolution. They don't spend any money. Is that true? Try and stop them. Yeah, try and stop. I, <laughs> I love it, man. All, all, <laughs> kind of, all kind of push back on the government today. Try and stop them. Here's what the deal is. Look at the ones on the left-hand side. This is the this is the key. This is the key. So, numbers of offers received by the contracting officer not reported. That's the the top one. 50%. Oh no, they're not reporting. It only really it really means one. We talked about this with contracting officers, so that's what that is. But take a look at the at those numbers and what they add up to in the dollar spent on the other side. 95% of them, ladies and gentlemen, were competed between five or fewer companies. And my question to you today is, are you one of the 16,561 with an average win of $832,000 in October, one of those 95 percenters? And that is in October and it's continuing resolution, wah, wah, wah. We still need to be out in front of people. So those are the questions of the day. What does it mean that 95% of the contracts in October had five or fewer responses? That's the hot seat, number one. Number two, what do buyers need from you to be one of the five? And what do incumbents want you to do? Those are the three questions we're gonna ask today. And participation is going to be painless for everybody because I already threw the uh, the nuclear um, ocean spray cranberry sauce question into the in there so everybody can calm down we can we can all get along now and you can pop your stuff into the chat you will see some links to the docs in the chat and then because we have 106 people here today raise your hand or pop stuff in the Q and A if you want to participate if you've been living under a rock and you have no idea how Zoom works you can go up the top. And you can click the side-by-side -side and make us bigger, smaller, whatever you would like to do. We do have a disclaimer, Sally White. You're not going to believe this, but we have a disclaimer for both industry as well as govies. First of all, it's not endorsed by any agency. That's the first thing. Participation here does not guarantee an award. I don't care what anybody thinks. Not going to guarantee an award. And then the govies, if you're a government official, we love having folks from the government participate. And the way you can participate is this is not an endorsement or commitment to purchase from anybody that happens to sign up here. So within this today, we will connect you with experts. We'll be discussing what works and we're our highlight sponsors. And one of the highlight sponsors is Sam Radar. And that's you, Rob. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later. So you can stick around and you can see Sam Radar. If you if you want to, we'll call some things up. What do you think, Rob? Sound like a good idea? Absolutely. And I'll tell the story of how I stumped you the other day. 
All right. I love that I'm idea. Sticking around. I always love I always love to hear how people get stumped, especially me. All <laughs> right. So so here's the question of the day. Why are you here? At least the first question of the day. There's multiple questions. So before we get into it, are you new to federal contracting? Do you have federal contracts and you're a subcontractor and you want to win as a, a more as a prime? Or were you one of the 116,501 federal prime contracting winners of fiscal year 2022, and you want to blow it up even more? That's the question. Or some, some nut sent you an email. So I'm certain that there are people here that are going to call that person a nut. And I won't say who the nut is. Do you want to say who the nut is, Rob? They may or may not be named Dave Lowe or Desiree Johnson. Or Rob. <laughs> or me. <laughs> There could be multiple wing nuts. Uh, so welcome back to every 43% of the people are back. Now we need wow. to, we need to, um, we need to have their heads examined before they continue on and they <laughs> keep coming back, but that's okay. We love it. So uh, we do appreciate you guys being here. We'll leave that up for just a minute and we will put the links into the chat. We have the winnable opportunity matrix, the ISI federal capabilities, the 92nd challenge. And we are going to be talking about procurement readiness with the doctor in the house. So we also asked the question of what was the one word that describes the federal market to you? All right. I'm going to pop this out just a second. I'm going to see if I can do this. I'm going to pause. I got some new ones here. I want to, I'm going to pull up some of the ones that I, I saw from, from last time, but I got some new ones. And I'm going to share this out if I could. Uh, here's a few. Let me go back here and see if, can you guys, let me, let me zoom in because there's no way anybody's going to be able to read that if I don't zoom in. All right, let's see what we got real quick. Let's see what we got. We have um, best customer, complex marketing. Agree with that. A partner, big spender, irresponsible. Woo. Uh, treasure trove, a lot of, a lot of work for little reward. Woo. Uh, Evan's here. Uh, from Van Healthcare Services, done like vast, difficult, big, bloated, and bureaucratic, omnipotent. I don't know. That's a that's that kind of gets a little bit too large. Uh, big. If you don't know anyone, to be aware to get a contract. That is that I highlighted that one because we're going to talk about that. A buyer experience difficult to navigate. Yes, effective. Who is that, Danny? Are you here? You think the government's okay? I had a challenge of that. Necessary, not sure, complicated. Complicated and not small business friendly in procurement. That would be true. That comes from reality technology. Uh, spending, inefficient. So there you got you and uh, you and um, who, who said that they were effective? You and Danny. So Mike and Danny can throw down later on that one. Large, slow. That is true. You agree with that, Greg Clark? No. Yes. <laughs> How about passion? All right. Allows He's the guy who didn't like cranberry people. sauce, Dave. Don't listen to him. That's right. He didn't like it. I agree. He likes, uh, allows he likes big his Thanksgiving companies. meal in a, in a can. What's that? He likes his Thanksgiving meal in a can. With <laughs> mashed potatoes and cranberry. Yeah. That's right. What, what did you say, Zachary? I know that. That's what I'm supposed to be sharing. All right. Cheap with an E. Two E's. Love it. Bureaucratic, <laughs> behind in time, overwhelming. I agree with that. Potential, good potential, good. Incompetent, okay. Uh, not equally fair, cumbersome, cancerous. Eesh. All right, scary, cumbersome, positive, a powerhouse, difficult, busy, busy, currency, complicated. Okay, we got some of those. Everybody, toughest nut to crack there is. I like that one, James. And, and there's a few more in here you guys can read. Obviously, Obviously, we're all here because uh, and if you have something else you want to pop into the chat, anybody want to pop into the chat what they got for, for what the federal government is, you can pop that into the chat. Big spender from uh, Rama Kampf. Love it. Uh, you can pop that in there. And uh, what, is, what is going on here? I think I can. What am I doing? If I do back to this. It's a red tape. Yeah. Yeah. Not that. All right. So hold on a second. It's I'm more sure. like red duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right, let me see if this is it, it still working. All right, one. All right, so here's some of the words that, that you get flagged. And I flagged some in the green and the red that are positive and negative, right? So positive uh, being the green, right? So so uh, a lot of the ones on the unbalanced, obtuse, obtuse bloated, 
uh, bigger, bigger businesses, right? We see a lot of that. So there's a couple of the more awesome, challenging, chaotic. We see a lot of chaotic when people come in. Uh, unknown is a big one. Let's talk about that one because that's one of the reasons why we're here. We're going to be talking about the fact that it's unknown. You need to know how things work. Let me end this poll real wait, quick. Wait, wait, Dave. Yes, you sir. Have someone named Juan Valdez. Juan Valdez is on here. That, come on. I'm serious. Is that really no Juan Valdez? Is that right? No way. There is somebody yeah, from we Juan. Have a, we have a participant named Juan Valdez. Is that right? Is that for real? Welcome yeah, right on. here. Oh, that's fantastic. Is Juan, <laughs> the best coffee. Juan Valdez that, is in the house. That is awesome. Yeah, Jace. I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about that, quite frankly. He says, I'm not the coffee guy. <laughs> <You're> not, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, classic. so and 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 just for you, Juan, I'm not the guy that owns Lowe's either. So there you go. So we're yeah. we're on the same page. So <laughs> all right. That's a classic. man on oh man. All right. So anyway, that's why we're here. We're here to talk about all those things and how confusing it is. And we're going to try to unconfuse things. So I'm Dave Lowe. I'm the CEO of ISI Federal. I'm going to introduce some of these other folks here in just a minute. But a little bit about ISI Federal on the right hand side, you'll see some of the some of the products and the programs that we have. Uh, market Essentials helps you get smart about the market across the board. Uh, Rafael Moreira knows a little bit about that. He was referring business and market essentials before I even knew him, which was fantastic. Uh, that goes in the podcast. If you want to hear the podcast, <laughs> uh, we talked about that. Um, GovBrief helps you reach, sta reach stakeholders, and that includes industry as well as interagency briefings. We push these out to the govies. It's one of the only ways that we know to be able to shake the tree and see who's working on stuff that matters to you. And we do that for our clients. It is, uh, it, it's all booked up until uh, 115. So if you're interested in that, you need to let us know as soon as humanly possible if you want to reach program managers. You can also reach buyers and industry, but this is, this is the way that we go about that. If you're interested in that, we can certainly help. Um, and upcoming courses, today I have one with, um, Zachary, can you find that uh, link for, um, for the session today with Brian Hebel? That's, that's with, Two, two feds today. I'm talking to two feds. One's retired and one is a current program manager. And we keep on uh, gaining more understanding. This is white paper marketing if you're interested in that. Uh, Sam.gov tutorial with me and Rob. Then we have doing business with the VA with me and sole source justification. And that goes for everybody. Everybody has the potential to write a sole source justification just about. You just have to word it right. And that's what we're going to be talking about. You can find that on govbrief.us. The one other thing we're talking about today is samradar.com. Rob runs the sales side of Sam Radar. And he we're going to talk about that at the end of the show. Uh, you can check it out at samradar.com. And it does unstealth the 98% that never hit sam.gov. You might be saying, what are you talking about? Only 2% hit sam.gov? That would be true. Probably, yeah. that's, that would be yes, affirmative. So we do monitor SAM.gov, though, with SAM.bid, and we also monitor GSA eBuy with QuickFuse. All these are time-saving efforts so that you can spend your time marketing what you do and building relationships, because guess what? That's what you really want to be doing. You want to be building relationships, not doing the research or trying to find stuff. So we also help with marketing direct to uh, GSA if you have a GSA contract. And we'll talk about a little bit about that in a minute with Greg. But first of all, Raphael, the good doctor, is in the house. And Rafa helps with branding. What in the world? We'll talk a little bit more about being ready. So we we'll, we'll already yeah. set you up for that. But Glasses, everyone. Everyone, that's, glasses. Oh, that's right. Peter, my, Greg. Where are my glasses? Dave, I love my glasses. In it's solidarity with Dr. Raphael. Oh. All right, so he's got the sexy blue glasses, just like <laughs> I didn't wear them today, but I have the green and the. He got the green. He got the green yeah. looking. Yeah. Is that a green shirt too? You're all matching. No, it's red. Are you red. Time? See, I'm colorblind, <laughs> so I can't tell. To me, it's the same. Go ahead. So, uh, but you help folks with branding. We're going to talk a little bit about that, about people looking like they belong. So you're going to help with that. But you also do certifications and a couple of other things. Tell everybody what you do. We, we basically focus on helping you launch successfully and then looking the part, uh, fitting in and being contract and procurement ready uh, to, mm -hmm. to conduct business in the, in the federal government or in the large private sector supply chains. 
we help vendors get set up, procurement ready, and ready to start knocking on doors. And that's when we transition you over to our other partners on this team who can help with either proposal writing, GSA schedule, LinkedIn work, finances with Peter Timbus, uh, Rob and, and, and Sam Radar to identify opportunities, et cetera. This is the whole bowl of wax, right? We the play whole bowl team. of wax. That's it. So you and I are going to be doing something because you may want to subcontract. We're doing two briefings, right? That's uh, with right. Raphael, subcontracting and becoming a prime. So both of those are very important. Because you, you are here, right? We're going to give you a taste of things. And we're going to fire hose you with information, I promise, today. But these are for, if you want to subcontract, go to govbrief.us and look up for subcontracting or becoming a prime in 2023. And we're going to focus with you on how to find the people and do what you want to do. That's what we're supposed to do, right, Rafa? It's super important, Dave. And I, and I know this, speaking as a former large private sector procurement officer, and sitting on the other side of the table, I can tell you exactly what we look for in folks like you when you knock on our doors. That's right. And it's really important to know. And we're going to talk a lot about that, but it's one of the questions that we have. And the other one of the questions that we're going to talk about, a part of how you belong, deals with GSA contracts or other contracts, right? Right, Greg? It's not just GSA, but you guys do both. Tell, tell everybody what you do. Well, before we do that, um, getting even with Raphael for a moment, Joanne Small put a question and she says, I'm brand new and I don't even know how to get started. So Joanne, uh, you need to contact Raphael. You need to get <laughs> ready to go. And and here's Raphael's phone number. You can call him right now. That's it. Take a screenshot. Right. Yep. Uh, so go ahead and so what but before so tell everybody what you do. So we uh, we've been in business since 1995, helping companies evaluate RFPs and determining which ones are a good fit for your experience and capabilities. And when it is a good fit, we can help you put your proposals together. We we have uh, we've helped our clients win 404 federal contracts in our 27 years, with a con combined value that is in excess of two billion as of, two billion uh, a year two and a half ago. We've got billion. billion, and then we've also helped. Um, uh, just over 440 companies get on the GSA schedule. So those are the two primary service areas and everything else we do is in support of those. Yep. And they do a great job because they love paperwork and I don't. <laughs> and Sally, tell everybody what you do, Miss Master Networker Uber Connector. <laughs> morning, morning, morning. Three things. One is strategy. What is your business strategy? That drives everything. Are you trying to sell your company for billions of dollars? Are you trying to pivot? Are you trying to get into the government, et cetera, et cetera? Secondly, once you have your strategy defined, you really want to do branding. And that's where Raphael comes in and assists you with that. Um, branding includes LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a very powerful platform and you can get on it free and basically helps you develop, strengthen, network, manage your professional relationships, brand awareness. You can influence decisions. You can get into analytics to really help you focus on growing your business. And then the third thing is I'm an Uber connector, executive connector. Well, I don't know everyone. I know a lot of people and I can help you get to that key decision maker. Once Dave and his team in um, Sam Radar, once you sign up for Sam Radar, helps you understand the program managers, contract managers. I can help you connect with the influencers and decision makers. So and I love it. Chat, and I love to uh, give you know 15 minute complimentary any friends of Dave's is a friend of mine complimentary session on sort of getting your uh doing business with the government vibe on thank you there you go and she'll she'll be around and, and we'll certainly give you an opportunity to talk with Sally's going to be around Peter Timbis helps yes. folks with contract funding so if you think about how federal contracting works right so once you win a contract then you might have to fund it and you might not have the dollars that are necessary in order to, or on the front end, even <clears throat> you can help on the on the um, in when you're creating the presentation or the the proposal to to them to say, hey, we we have the financial fortitude to do it, right? Correct. Well, welcome everybody, and everyone needs to take advantage of all the panelists here because they all add a lot of value to what you're going to be doing in the federal space. We just got back from the same conference down in uh, Nashville. 4,500 attendees, 600 exhibitors. We had 500. We had 25 companies that signed up for our consulting services on how to grow their business through lending in, uh, to the opportunity. And what Dave was talking about, that if you're bidding on a federal government contract and the government comes back and says, well, we need to know that you have the financial capability to bid to work this contract, 
we will provide you with a letter of financial support. We and that costs, to, now wait a minute, Peter, that costs like $10,000 for you to do, right? No, that costs zero. Zero? No, zero dollars. There are no fees associated with anything that what we do until you actually borrow money. And as if I get this with David, we did $2.6 billion of Come on, Ralph, and get it up there. $2.6 billion of financing last year. So if you want to grow your business through lending to the opportunity, we're there to help. Love it. And he does a great job. And he has a lot of, especially 8A world, you're, you're a lot in it. You do a lot with the 8A world. Uh, I will, I'll, I'll say, hey, Brian, Brian's not here today, but Brian is a former federal contracting officer. I will be doing the briefing with him today. Did you find that, Zachary? Can you pop that in there? I'll be joining him at 1 p.m. If you want to join me, Brian, and a federal program manager today at 1, we're going to be talking about white papers. And uh, so that's where you can get there. All right. So we're going to get right to it. And I'm going to ask everybody here the, the, the poll for this because it's sort of a setup. And I'm trying to I'm trying to govern it. So the question number one is, what does it mean that 98% of the contracts in October had five or fewer responses. And that, does that mean that uh, all of these folks were paying attention to Sam.gov? All of these were run on price? Or buyers had a short list of vendors. You can choose as many as you want now. Uh, the procurement was fair, was, wasn't was fair and is illegal. Or you don't believe it's even true. So you can even say that if you want to. You could say it's fake news. And were you one of the 16,561 that won in October is the question. So if you're one of those folks, this is an only in October now. So I, I think there's five fibbers, but I it could just be because I didn't preface it first. So there you go. So for everybody here, uh, while, while you're answering that, we're going to talk about the stakeholders because it's important for new folks. Right, Rafa, we got to know who the stakeholders are. We have contracting officers, program managers, and project managers, uh, <coughs> contracting officer representatives, and senior management, right? That's okay. that's kind of the, the lay of the land. So real quick, you have the politicals at the top, and then you have your senior level bureaucrats, and they're not bad people just because they're bureaucrats. They're not bad. These yeah. people run the agencies, right? Then on one side, you have the program managers and project managers. On the other side, you have procurement. Right. So the folks on the, the side for the program managers, they care about getting the job done. It's really important. These are the folks that care that you really have the capabilities to deliver. While on the other side, the, they care about getting the contract done, which is spending the money. So so there's two different two different roles, distinct roles and distinct buying motives internally within those folks. So you have a need. So that means, okay, they want to buy something, right? So the program says, I need something, Raphael. I need a company that can do this. So they throw it over the fence to procurement. Who cares about getting the contract done? When when they land in procurement, mm -hmm. you can't talk to the program manager anymore, right? It's, no, against, it's against the rules. That's it's right. against the law. And in fact, if you do, they can throw you out. So you need to have a relationship with both of these folks, which is exactly why we have the session handouts, which include the winnable opportunity matrix. And on the right-hand side, you can see that you have your program manager right there. And then they have a they have a requirement, gets thrown over the fence to the contracting officer. And that is how an opportunity is created. Now, we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail here on all these folks. And I'm going to shut this poll down so people can actually see what we're talking about. Oh, I want to share this, though, real quick, because I think this is cool. So <clears throat> love this. Love it. 31% says they're paying attention to postings on Sam.gov. Love it. They all want on price, because a lot of people believe it's all about price, don't they, Greg? Oh, it's almost entirely on price. It's almost entirely on price. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, liar, liar, pants on fire. Oh, right there. All right. So buyers had a short list of vendors. They know that. Ladies and gentlemen, is the top question and the right answer. Um, the procurement was illegal. There's a couple of folks that were saying it's not fair. There are, it's not fair. First of all, it's not fair. It's never fair. Life's not fair. That's the first thing. But we have ways to be able to get through this, right? 
And some folks don't believe it's true. Love that. Love it. And, I, and I'll show it to you in, in the uh, in, in the fpds.gov. We can talk about that because the reports are direct from the federal government. And those are actually true numbers. So I will I'll make sure that you guys know that. So the hot seat number question, question number one, what does it mean, Raphael, that 95% of the contracts in October had five or fewer responses? What does that mean to you? What do you think? What that means is uh, some folks had already done their work, right? And and that there are favorites that people have. What? There's, what there's favoritism? There are There is bias. There, there's there is. bias? <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. Is, is there profiling too? Well, <clears throat> I mean, we all have preferences, right? Yes, we do. We go to a barber, we go to a specific gas station, we get, we buy from specific groceries, right? It, we do business with people we know, like, and trust, right? That's, that's yeah. the bottom line. Yep. So there you go. No like and trust. What do you got on that, Greg? What does it mean that 95% of the contracts in October had five or fewer responses? Well, I think I think Raphael nailed it. I mean, this is there's this is work being done to uh to get something to, uh, with between the contractor and an agency where they're talking to them and, and identifying the need and explaining what they have that can that can solve that problem and leading things in their direction. I couldn't agree more. What do you think, Sal? So it means that I didn't sign on to a market intelligence software. Where I can, I mean, you know, I, I know it sounds like I'm shamelessly promoting Sam Radar, which I probably am. But seriously, <laughs> we'll let you do that. Yeah. No, seriously, it means that I'm not aware of what I can actually do to influence that particular scenario. Nah, that's 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 good. That's a good call. What do you think, Peter? You want to weigh on this one? You don't Peter's have to. Frozen. Peter's froze up. All right. He's he uh, he's he in has... his airstream trailer frozen. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't so, I can't hear you. No, you can't hear me. That's because you you froze up. So so I, 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 I'm going to I love every answer that you guys just had, because every one of those is true that that they that you, if you didn't know about it, how could you possibly be one of the five if you didn't know that the exactly. opportunity was there if you if you don't know. And for those of you who don't, don't believe, it's worse than 95% that don't hit SAM.gov. Only 2%, including GSAE buy, 2% total across the board hit SAM.gov. And it's it, so you, you're talking about how, to your point, Sally, and yes, it is a leading question because that you need to, you guys have to have an answer to this. You have to have an answer to how you're going to become one of the five. So right. any questions about this? But uh, I like open it up for everybody. Um, let's see. Uh, the best. What is so? David's asking question. What's the best way to keep track of open federal contracts that are specific to your product? We'll talk about that, David. Another one from you. Is there some resource that lists all eight A's? We're interested in eight A partners. The answer is we have a report for that uh, yeah. that we that we actually ran for a client. Uh -huh. that we're going to be reviewing today right rob yes we are so we're going to be talking about that david so if you would if you'd like to have a copy of that report we would we would, you know it's, it's not free just saying but uh, we do have a way to be able to do that it is a crazy report with thousand to 50 58000 i think contracts that uh that are expiring because that's what you really <clears throat> you want to you want to do business with eight days and you also the other thing that you that you will know uh by the way from sam radar so there's two places that you can find that that show the the awards that are won there so be glad we'll be glad to okay we'll make sure we we do that make sure we get you involved rob you can reach out to uh david after this and we can we can uh make sure that he gets included any other any other suggestions any other comments on Hot seat question number one, which is what does it mean? What does it mean to you that that those contracts had in October alone had five or fewer respondents? What does that mean? To you? That was the highest number I've ever seen, by the way. And we've been tracking this for years. 95% is the highest. So what does that mean to you? Um, and, and anybody have anything else that they want to throw in there? <clears throat> Well, Dave, I, in addition, there's, oh, sorry, go ahead, Raphael. I was going to say that, uh, you know, a, a great number of times, Dave, and again, this is not because the contracting officers are not proactively looking for someone out there. There are billions of dollars worth of opportunities 
where it's open to everyone. And, I, and I've seen cases in buckets, right? Where more than $40 billion a year is available to everyone, yet only one bit is received. Yeah. So it's, it, people are not doing, the, they're not doing their homework. And Dave, it's not the government's work or job to make you aware of what your responsibilities are, okay? Ooh, what's um, that? I, I'm gonna, look, there's 30 million businesses in America, only 600,000 are in SAM, you do the numbers. That's crazy. Yeah, that so, guy's um, about two percent. We're not. We're not even top of my head. I can say that too. We're not even scratching the surface. And don't even get me started on the different buckets, right? Uh, from an economic standpoint, I think there's a large upside. Uh, we just need to do the work. We need to put in the work, and we need to invest in resources. And I know that sounds like a lot of work, but hey, nothing comes easy, right? It's there's no. Uh, <clears throat> it's not as uh, as as. If, if it were that easy, everyone would be doing it, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna open this up for real quick because I'm gonna share. Um, let me see if I can. Do, I think it's still there. Let me see if I. If you know, I while he's while he's doing this, my, hold on a second. So yeah. go ahead, Sal. What you got? I was just gonna say while he's pulling it up, I, I was I've been to several conferences um, this year, and it was amazing how some of the contract managers, program managers, influencers, decision makers. They said they were so surprised because they'll put out RFPs, RFQs, they'll meet people at conferences, and they said how few people really follow up yep. on those items. And so it takes very little to be a differentiator. Yeah. And uh, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, I agree with you entirely. And the follow-up and persistence, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes too. And that's really critical. Real quick, so I have a question from somebody here, and I appreciate the question, which is, uh, Justin says, why would you include did not report if 95% we did not know, right? So it's actually 50% we didn't know, right? So so all of these that say did not report, I can tell you in, in conversations with contracting officers, multiple, uh, Brian Hebel being one of them, he said, hey, if, if it doesn't, it usually is supposed to default to one if you don't, but sometimes they don't fill it out in the system and they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know as part of that, Justin. And there's a lot more they don't want you to know. And that's we'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes with Sam Radar when we review it. But this is this is these are the numbers. So I like to be one of the five. Does everybody agree that being one of the five is a good idea? Is there anybody that disagrees that they want they you know as far as these numbers, I definitely want to be the only one, right, Rafa? If we can be the only one, we do. Right. Well, if we can be the, the one, it would be great. But yep. that aside, being in the top five means you have a great percentage of probability of winning. Right. And, That's yeah. and to your point and to your yeah. point, at least, you know, that something is there. You can make the decision of whether you want to respond or not. But it, but if you don't know that that information is there, how can you possibly play? You cannot play if you don't know. And that's that's where all of these not I'll, let me say this, not all, but the vast majority of these, these right here are the ones that are hitting Sam.gov and most, or were a, a, a component of Sam.gov in some form or fashion, or an IDIQ that had multiple awards. Greg, what is an IDIQ? It's a it's a a, a multiple award contract where. <clears throat> typically they're going to have a, an agency wants to get a group of maybe five, maybe 10 companies that meet the criteria of their choosing because they have, they have identified a lot of work. Let's say it's it work or it's mm -hmm. construction work, whatever it is. They know they have a lot of work that they need to do. So Some instead people. of, instead of going through a full procurement process every time for the next 10 years to get all those, these projects done, they're going to <clears> put <throat> out a multiple award task quarter contract, IDIQ mm -hmm. and, get a pool of five or 10 or whatever how many of the companies they want. And then one of these, whenever one of these opportunities comes up within their agency, they'll just issue a task order to that pool and let them go through a more streamlined procurement process to get on it. And sometimes those IDIQs are single awardees and sometimes yeah. they're multiple awardees, right? right. <clears throat> and so that's why, that's why we also tick off each one of these because this determines the IDIQ can determine, and a blanket purchase agreement as well. There are a GWAC, there's a whole dump, a bunch right, of different names, right. depending on what it is. But just know that there's <laughs> methodologies to legally, legally award this to 
a large business with only one response. Mm -hmm. Legally, mm -hmm. they can do it. Yeah, And they do it because it, that's what makes it easy for them to be able to procure. So, so I'm just letting you know, everybody know. A any other questions on this before we jump to the next hot seat question? Let's see. How do you avoid scams? Great question. I'm not sure what that means, Erica. We'll talk, if you'd like to elaborate, I'll be glad to do what I can. So that's what, Justin, that's why we included 95%. Um, and Wans was saying how le less information is available. You're right. A lot of times they don't even make it available at all. Uh, and, and, then, so, so, and then an anonymous attendee, we always love them. Why do some bids post on Sam.gov, on Sam do within three to four days? Great question. Anybody want to take that one? Well, it's going to limit competition. They uh, they probably have, they've probably done a lot of work leading up to this three or four day uh, lead time that's going to be done. Um, and possibly I have uh, budgetary reasons they need to get it done awarded quickly, like the end of September. Yeah. And they already um, have, they've already selected someone. Yeah, so. that's what I was, uh, uh, All right. but I mean, as far as lead, um, a lot of work has been done behind the scenes prior to this being issued with a three or four day lead time. Okay. They're ready to go. And it's probable that that person, the pe the people that won, were the ones that have their fingerprints all over it. Just saying. Super quick story. Very large, multi-million dollar contract. Um, we came in, we knew the decision maker, CEO, et cetera. <clears throat> they already had five or six other people that they were looking at. We demonstrated that our solution was superior in all of their RFPs because, um, anyway. And so what they did is they actually closed the RFP they closed it, changed some of the requirements based on what we said they needed based on our expertise. They reopened it up and made it like a two-day turnaround. And guess who got in? Hmm. So it's legal. It's how you do it. It's what they do. And what Dave is doing here, as we all see, is giving us that competitive advantage by having that intel before it's too late. Love it. All right, so hot seat question number two, and we do have one from WANS, get the work done a ASAP, absolutely. There are drivers, like, like if you talk about FEMA work or something like that, they have to have that stuff done. All right, so the question that we have next is the hot seat question number two, is what do buyers need for companies to be one of the five? Okay, so here's the question. I'm registered in sam.gov and they'll find my company uh, they need to know what I do and that I'm really, really good. So procurement needs, the buyers need to know that you're really, really good at what you do. Um, uh, and I need a GSA contract or some other vehicle. I need to track Sam.gov and be the lowest price. I need to look like I belong or I need to proactively go out. And I think you can answer, oh, there's a single choice. I'm sorry, guys. That should be multiple choice. Uh, error, error, user error on the, on the guy that did it. Uh, do you and so do you look like you belong? So that so there is a most important uh, there, but there are two that are most important because um, what is happening right now? Our number one job is building relationships, and you do need to look like you belong, right, Rafa? Because you can't look like you belong and be proactive and go out after people if you look like an idiot, right? You're going to get ruled out right away. They're going to smell newbie, and newbie means risk. They don't. They hate risk because they have to deliver the services. They have to buy what their uh, program managers are asking them for. And if they source a vendor that doesn't meet the spec, it's going to reflect poorly on them. That's right. And you do have to write a good RFP and respond, and you or you have to have a vehicle to be able to buy from, right? Right, Greg? Yeah, you absolutely do. You need to make it easier for them. That's always good. However, Looking like you belong, very, very important, and being proactive are the two pieces that are primary in this. And yes, they do need to know that you're good, but they don't really care. Buyers don't care nope. that you're good at what you do. They care about the contract vehicle and how they can buy from you and how you can make it easy for them uh, for, to buy from you. And uh, real quick, uh, coming up with, with you, Rafa, we do have the subcontracting and being a prime. And all of that revolves around looking like you belong and being proactive to pursue both of those things, right? That's right. Looking the part and fitting the part and being contract ready, right? Which means they are ready to engage you, 
right? And you're ready to engage them. That's right. And if you don't look like you belong, you don't belong. That's right. That's a fact. All right, Brilliant. so questions, we're gonna open this up because questions about looking like you belong. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure what you meant, Erica, about the avoiding scams. Let me know about, about that side of things. Let's see if there's anything else. Um, uh, let's see. I'm not sure about the, the stuff in chat. Do me a favor, pop it in the, if you have something in chat, pop it into the, the Q&A. Um, so one of the biggest things uh, for contracting officers, to me, is reducing the risk. The, you, these folks are, are risk averse. Would you agree with that, Greg? A hundred percent. And, and, <clears> and so, that's, why, that's why what Raphael does is, is uh, so important. You know, the risk is, I don't know if this company's really up to this job. Well, if they, if they come in with, with a, a great website and a great capability statement and they, they have all their, they, they clearly know the, the, the work, that eliminates some risk. And then if they come back and say, all right, well, yeah. Um, and like you said, just kind of bouncing back very, very quickly what you were talking about earlier as far as, um, you know, what kind of contract vehicle that you want to have. Because when, when you're marketing with, with uh, your clients directly to agencies and you make a breakthrough and they say, you know what, this is, a, you have what we're looking for. You say, well, what's your preferred procurement mechanism, right? Yeah, the, I love that question. Mechanism. And if love their it. answer isn't something you have, you're, uh, there's a, that's a little problem. Well, it's a problem that you have to solve because yeah. if, if you don't have the procurement mechanism that they prefer, then at least you know the bucket of people that you need to be looking at who have that procured mechanism that you can then team with or or sub to, right? So you have you have the options, but if you don't have the conversation with them and you're not going to get the conversation if you don't look like you belong, number one, and you won't get it if you're not proactively being persistent, right? right. So, not so being proactive it, and persistent. Yeah, if you, you make a breakthrough with your marketing and they say, yeah, this is great. Well, um, are you on the GSA schedule? Or you want the answer to be yes. Because that's, I mean, that's the granddaddy, right? That's that's the big one that they get to use the most. That's the one with $40 billion a year in sales. Yep. So that that's the big one. No, um, the if they want to make it happen, they can make it happen. But uh, that 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 makes it quicker and easier and less expensive for them to get the products and services they need. Yeah, Love that. If you have so questions, what you got, Sally? What do you got oh, on top I was just going to say, so many people, they, you know, they'll call, they'll, you know, consult with us and say, we want to do business with the government. And yet we go to their website and there's no government page, no CAPE statement, anything that looks like you look like you belong. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that, um, you know, Dr. Marrero and we do is look at help brand them so you look like you belong. The other thing that mitigates risk, just pulling the thread of what mm -hmm. Dave said, if your LinkedIn page has recommendations and references and you're posting valid content and you're engaging with people, then that looks like you belong. And a lot of program managers, contract managers, I connect with on LinkedIn and that really helps you as well. I, I, have, a, I have feedback on something that happened in LinkedIn because their program manager did some research on a company that reached out to them, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> And on their LinkedIn page, they said, we maximize our profitability on federal contracts. Now, when she saw that, she was like, if that's your, and their, and their website, by the way. So be careful what you're yes. marketing and where your, your govies come to see, because guess what? If you're pitching industry so that they can suck all the dollars out of the government, the government doesn't look favorably on that. So I just wanted to let let you know there's you, you do want to pay attention to what is happening in your social platforms, right? Right, Sally? No, you're absolutely correct, and you want to make it so that you're serving the needs of the government as well as your constituents. So that's a really good point, Dave. Make sure yep. you're working and everything is your messaging supports everyone and the value and the superpower you bring to both entities. Love that. And and so anonymous is a question. How how can you find contracting opportunities other than sam.gov or through a GWAC? Oh, stick so, around. Oh, stick so around for that softball answer coming up. What do you ask? <laughs> right? Funny you ask. Yeah, funny right? you ask. Yeah, funny right. you should ask such a question. Love that question, by the way. It's a great question. By the and we all should be asking <clears> the same <throat> question. It's just that we just happen to have an answer. All right. So number one, again, our number one job is building relationships because relationships trump all that. If it, if you don't believe it, look, one of the five, you want to be one of the five, how do you get there? You get there by building a relationship, having that dialogue saying, hey, I can't knock your socks off if you don't let me play. I, and, and that alone should be 
part of your strategy. And this is time. One thing right now I want to say in building relationships, just like every other type of relationship, you're not normally going to walk up to somebody and say, hey, let's get married. Right. <laughs> Probably not going to work. No. Probably not. So you want to, you're seeding the relationships right now. And the urgency fact, I cannot tell you how urgent it is because on the pro, the project manager that I'm talking with today and presenting with today at 1 p.m. said she stops talking to industry nine months before she, she does the RF, before that RFP hits the street. Mm. That blew my mind because normally it's around 90 days. <clears throat> so that gives us time. But if you're talking about nine months, folks, we're halfway through the halfway through Q1. We're in the middle of November. What are you saying, Dave? That's Q3, Q4. No, it's not. September, September 30th was the end of the fiscal year. So October, November, we're halfway through Q1. And if you're not building relationships with this lady, by the end of December, you're out of business. And it and it's a it, this this isn't the the thinking of everybody, but I can tell you that is the urgency factor right now to be seeding those relationships because they're willing to talk to you right now. They don't have the money to spend, so don't go asking them. Hey, I want a contract today. No, your job build the relationships. Anybody disagree with that? Mm -mm. So here's a question here, uh, from from December. Cool way to, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. That's a cool way. I've never heard that name before. Uh, December, December, Pierce. Uh, cool way. Uh, anyway, I have my Sam. How do you go after contracts if you don't even know how to go after them? Love it. Plus, everyone wants to charge thousands of dollars to assist a new company. That's true. It's not easy. It's not fast. And it's not cheap. However. It's not free. It, and it's not free. That's for sure. It's just not free. I mean, if you're going to, you need to spend the resources or somebody else has got to spend the resources to help get you there. However, I will say this, the methodology, and we'll hold off for a little bit and let, let Rob talk in a few minutes, the methodology behind that, stick around and we'll, we'll, we'll show you how you don't have to spend thousands to be able to start the process. Does that sound good, Rob? Absolutely. So, so any uh, questions, any other questions for that? Um, it was a hot seat. Question number three, what do incumbents want their competition to do? And I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna open the poll again. So what do incumbents want their competition to do? Only watch Sam.gov for opportunities, lose hope. And hopefully we have multiple choice on this one. Underestimate the time needed to be successful. Register to be a sub in their database. Use PTAC and Ozdebu as their entry point. There's a lot wrapped up in this. And, and Greg knows he's laughing already. Uh, believe that you can't talk to contracting officers or pay no attention to their buying relationships. All right. And so the next one, I want to bid on Sam opportunities when they hit, sub the primes, punch the primes in the mouth and steal their business or see the relationships so I can act. So we're talking about the relationships between the, the buyer and the prime. This is what turns things upside down. Because if you can see the relationships of the buyers and the primes, then you'll see who, who is one of the five and whether or not you can noodle your way in there. That's your job, building relationships. So there you go. So we'll get to this. So real quick, let's add, for, for, for the hot seat, what do incumbents want their competitors to do, Rafael Marrero? Say again, I'm sorry? What do incumbents, the people that are winning, uh, right? want their competitors to do? They want you to fail. That's the they bottom line. They want you line. to fail. They, they want, want you to, to freaking die and go away. Yeah. Right. How about you, Peter Timmis? What do they want you to do? I agree. <clears throat> they, want you, they want you to go away. They want you to fail. They don't want you to be proactive. They want you to just register in the in the sam.gov and you think a lot of business is going to come your way it doesn't operate that way what you about you greg proactive. what about you greg i want you to become cynical oh, oh there, there's already somebody there they're gonna get you can't beat us uh, you can't incumbent. beat us. you can't win you can't beat an incumbent, you can't yeah, beat an incumbent. that's what they want 
That's what they want you to believe, right? Yeah, well, you- there's a pretty high percentage of those 404 wins. We weren't the incumbent. We didn't have any, and we weren't marking advance. We were responding to a solicitation and just being better than them. That's true. But nowadays, when, you, when you're looking at stuff, you know when you have an in, don't you? I know when I, when I have an in, and I would, I would like to have an in, but I don't yeah. always have an in. Don't but always. If, if, but what, I, what I want is a company with the experience and capabilities to win and, and perform properly. And Speaking of that, did you talk to Mark about being the SDV OSB? We've talked, we've talked twice now, and uh, he's going to review it again with his people. And then, um, Mark, we're at five days, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mark might be here, by the way. Mark is here. He is here. Hey, Mark. So well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a sort of a little, tiny different perspective. So if the client is looking for some innovative solution that an incumbent's competition doesn't have, they may want you to be additive. So that's why it's really important to never think you've completely lost or it's with the big prime, because I have several really large primes that do you know $15 billion contracts with the DOE who are always looking for innovation, you know, creativity, an award, someone who's an 8A, someone who's a small uh, women-owned organization. So don't rule out that possibility if you have something additive where you can be more agile than the competition and you can also add something to their large contract. Does that make sense? And that's a good point, right? So you're talking about teaming with a prime, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Right. So I'm going to, I'm going to share this out for just a minute because I think this, this bears. So first thing, if if you leave with anything today, know that only 2% hit SAM.gov. So if incumbents are, that, that absolutely wants you to pay attention to SAM.gov. And also they've worked on it for nine, 10 months, 12 months, 14 months to get their fingerprints on that particular solicitation. So they absolutely want you to wait. Now you can still win, Greg. You can still win. I know. Now I know you know. So they do want you to lose hope. They want you to die and go away. They want you to say, this federal government is too hard for me and I don't want to stick around, right? So underestimate the time necessary to be successful. I'm going to ask the question real quick. How long do you think it should take? Because I'm going to tell you how long it takes. How long do you think, get in your mind, how long you think it should take? And Rafael Marrero, how long on average does it take to be a successful <clears throat> contractor in the federal government on average? He's on a phone call. Oh, he's on a phone call. He can't answer the question. Who wants to answer that? How long does it take? I'll answer it if you don't. Two years. Two years. On average. Two to, it's actually two to three years, between two and three years. And I did this in 2009. I asked the question of, 11 successful federal contractors, and that was the answer. Not only that, either in sweat equity or in dollars, they had to spend $150,000 per year in order to be successful. So So, know what what you're up against. Go ahead, Sal. I was just going to say, you're right. It's not for somebody who has a weak stomach or not being there for the long haul. However, there are ways to hack the government contractor algorithm. Yes, and that's true. I'm sure that someone on Dave's team will pop this testimonial in the chat. But occasionally, if you're at the right conference or you're at the right place or you see the right opportunity come through SAM.radar, right? And you call at just the right time, you can hack this two year, 18 month situation by being at the right place. And it's a really important thing because Dave actually has a testimonial from a woman who got. Um, her SAM radar, you know, daily email, she called and she ended up getting a million dollar contract. Is that correct? That's a fact. There's no doubt about it. This isn't, we're not just like, whoa. But she'd all, she she was also prepared, by the way. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's also been in it for a while. So So, So, anyway, I just wanted to put that little thing in there. So don't be discouraged. You can. You can, you can win. You can win. Uh, registering a sub database is in in a prime contractor sub database, large guys, especially. They want you to do that because that gives them plausible deniability for whether or not they're seeking small businesses. So that's a double-edged sword. Use PTAX and Oz to booze. Just remember, they can help you, potentially help you. They cannot make decisions. They don't have budget and they don't have decision-making authority and they don't have contracts. So they can tell you no, but they cannot tell you yes. So they want you to get wrapped in that, that cycle. Um, 
There's a lot, Dave. Let me jump in here. There's a lot of people here who are new to government contracting, and I'll 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 make two sobering statements um, that I think people need to hear. And that's if you're if you're making the decision for your company to enter the federal marketplace, if you're not making a total commitment, if you come in halfway, you're probably going to lose every penny you spend trying to enter the market. And then that's, some. That's that's one. If you, if you decide to get on the GSA schedule to make it a shortcut and you don't know where your sales are going to come from before you get on the schedule, you're probably going to be like two out of three people who get on the schedule. They're never going to make a dollar. And you should, if that, if you don't know where your sales are coming from, you shouldn't be looking to get on the schedule. You should be um, spending your resources, your time and your money and getting in front of potential customers to talk about what you do and see if there's interest. Amen, brother. And we'll be talking about that in a couple of minutes if you want to stick around. I just, I don't, I don't know if people, if I just, I, it's true. You, like maybe half the people decide to leave here. Yeah, they, possible. but, but how, how cool is it? You just spend an hour to figure out that you don't want to be here. You just save tens of thousands of dollars by deciding that you don't want to play. And that is an okay answer. But what you cannot do is make the government operate the way you want to operate. You, they don't, they true. won't. They're not gonna. So you either adapt your processes into the way that the government operates or you will fail. So there you, there you go. And the other part is say, uh, don't pay no attention to their buyers. They don't want you to see their buyer relationships and they don't, they don't want you to, they want you to believe you cannot reach out and talk to contracting officers or program managers, both. So that's what I wanted to say. Um, and then, so real quick, we'll get you out of here and we're going to talk about Sam Radar for about 10 minutes if you want to stick around, but manage your expectations. Get your expect. Greg, that was absolutely fantastic what you just said. Is if hate, your people hate it when I say it. What? People don't want to hear it though. They don't want to hear it, but we're going to say it because we're not blowing sunshine. You, you don't, because you think you might want to dip your toes into this. This you is really, not a really, 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 really. <laughs> Greg, Greg said the most brilliant thing. Super quick, Greg. And I, I don't remember how it went, but, but that was that was pretty much what it was. Yeah, you, Greg you, said, you really want to you really want to really have a contract, but you really stand no chance to get it. And here's why: yep. you want to ignore the things that are going to prevent you from winning a contract because you really want the contract so bad. But Greg, so, I really, Greg, I really, 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 really want to <laughs> the government. You, yeah, just because you really, really want it, you get it, right? Yeah. No. That's how it works. No. So here's what we want to do. Number one, manage your expectations. You can stalk the winners. We're going to show you how to do that. You can get proactive. We're going to show you how to do that. You can be persistent. I'll show you how to do that too. And the most important thing is persevere. If you're not in, if you're not, if your brain is not wired to stay, to, to keep at this for more than two years before you're successful, reevaluate where you are. Well, exactly what Greg said. Reevaluate where you should be here right now. Mm -hmm. If if you're living if you're living hand to mouth and you're and you're and you're worried about making payroll this week, well, you can talk to you can talk to Peter Timbus if you have contracts. That's the first thing. But besides that, um, if if <laughs> Raphael, if that's your role right now, is you're trying to make payroll and you're looking for the government to be the quick fix, is that what, what's going to happen? No, <clears throat> no, no, no. If you're if you're concerned about your next payroll cycle or your cash flow, then that's one of the first things that uh, that I look for in my procurement readiness assessment. Uh, and I tell you, well, listen, maybe this is not the thing for you right now, perhaps later down the line, but uh, we need to look at your uh, financial well-being, your viability, right, as a contractor to execute on these contracts and deliver the services that the government is going to procure from you. Otherwise, uh, this may not be a good fit for you. That's exactly right. So with that, I hope that you guys had a great time. I'm going to ask this one last question because we're going to talk about uh, getting signed up to Sam Radar so you can stalk the winners. Because that, if you're not stalking the winners, if you're not looking at your competitors and going after the, either them as a sub to a prime, exactly what you said, Sally and Rafa, you said the same thing. Sub to prime, valuable, super valuable, especially if you're new. And that happens a whole lot faster than trying to crack the government by itself. On the other side, being able to, to say, all right, we're ready. And I want to go punch them in the mouth and steal their business. That's great. 
So you want to get signed up with that? Stick around. We're going to talk about it. Uh, we talked to Rafa about looking like you belong. Explore getting a GSA contract. Use GovBrief. We hadn't really talked about that. But again, you have to reach program managers. A complete federal strategy. You want to talk to Peter about funding. Great guy to talk about funding. And talk to Sally about networking on federal events or something else. Let us know. And let us know what you're willing to spend. This is not free. We already talked about it. it's not free. Uh, my time's not free. Your time's not free. Nobody here's time is free. However, we are willing to say, do this is what you need to do before we can even engage you. Is everybody, everybody here will talk to you for free. They're not going to be able to unpack everything that deals with the federal government for free, though. So manage that expectation and know that nobody else is going to be able to do it either. Nobody else. Nobody else will do it. So with that, we'll answer a couple more questions if we need to. Is anything else popping? Nothing in there right now. Uh, 326 days you have less left in this fiscal year. And the question is why they should let you in. Your job is to build relationships so that you can disrupt the status quo. And we will see you December 13th. If you decide to be one of the 44% that came back, love that. Love it. We really appreciate everybody being here. We will be, if you stick around, we'll be talking about Sam Radar. For another 10 minutes, I promise you, we'll be out of here within 10, 12 minutes. Um, and then we'll, we'll make sure if you need to reach out to me, you can reach out to me directly right there. And everybody else, if you want to share your contact information, you can grab it from the chat in just a minute. Uh, great job, guys. Anybody want to stick around with me? We'd, we'd love to. You can pop your stuff into. I do. I do. Go ahead. You can stick around. Yeah. So, so this is going to be on the this is going to be on the fly because I did not have everything set up before I did this today, but I will do I will make sure. Let me get this out of here. Hold on, I need to go escape. I can't escape. I can't so, escape. So the so Dave, they can't save the chat, but I just saved the chat, and so All right. I'm going to put so, my email address in here. And if there's a lot of valuable insights from the chat, so feel free to email me, and I'm happy to just email it to you. There you go. Email Sally for the chat. That's the first thing. And if you would like a free copy of the spend report, which, by the way, includes all the fiscal year 2022 vendor wins. And I'm going to show you why this is so important in just a minute. But we have the summary. We have the vendor wins. We have the October summary, which is this past month and the spending by NAICS from this past month so that you can figure out where your NAICS code should be if they're not already right. A lot of times they're not already right, are they, Raphael? That's right. That's correct. So what I do want to do is I want to take you to Sam Radar. And I'm going to start showing you some things today. This is, I literally, you can see, I just launched it. We have stuff that just came in. Here's an award for $14,000 that only had one offer received. And you ought to be asking your question, how does that happen? Well, the first thing I want to show you is there's a couple things that you can do, right, Rob? Let's tell them what we can do. We can reach out to Alicia or we can reach out to C3. Dave, I got to jump. All right, you go ahead, man. Great. Appreciate yeah, I got to go, time. David. Thank you. You got it. So maybe we want to reach out to Alicia. How many people here want to reach out directly to the buyer? That's Alicia. Here's Alicia's phone number. And here's Alicia's email. Now, you might be saying, what in the world am I going to say to Alicia? Well, guess what? We'll help you with, we'll help you with uh, email templates, won't we, Rob? We certainly will. So that's but one of the things that we do. Is we help companies with their message to the buyer. You may want to reach out to the prime. These are the people that are swimming in your pool. You may want to reach out to both because maybe, but you're like, I don't know that I really care about $14,335. Probably not worth what I want to do, but I still will reach out to Alicia because she's swimming in my pool. Probably a good idea. Everybody following that as a, as a, as a way to be able to do this? Let's go to this next one. Oh, here's $320,000 with number of offers received two. How does that happen? I wonder. We just talked about it. I'll bet you, by golly, that this character right here, the Janus Research Group, is one of the five that Rick Yao goes to from FAS, who's, who's also GSA, right? So that 
and you might say, hey, I do want to play a role in the 320,000. I could do a sub work to Janice in this research. But at the very least, if you're doing research, and oh, by the way, this is professional management and development is the next code that that hit on. This is why we review the next code with you, don't we, Rob? Yes, it is. So the next one, let's look at this one. 7,600 hours, one offer received. I'm just going down this point. And then you'll say, why are you telling me about $0? Craig Clark's not here anymore, but he will tell you, this happens to be a task order reallocating funding on a task order that innovative management concept has. Maybe you want to be reaching out to Jessica Havens to talk about that ta the task orders and future task orders. Here's one for $5,183. This one matched on other scientific, professional and scientific technical services. Anything ending with a 90 or a 99 is other. Maybe they're hiding this under some weirdo nakes because they don't want everybody to see it which is how you get one offer received because you're not watching that next code. It may have been out there on sam.gov. <clears throat> Never saw it. Let's roll down a little bit more and take a look at this one. 37,000. No, it doesn't say how many offers were received. So do you want to re reach out to Evangelina? Probably. If you want to direct work, Evangelina. If you want to sub to Prime, you can go to these folks. So this is the actionable item. You don't have to go any past here to be able to take this information along with a nice little email template that says what you want. You want to talk with Evangelina. Oh, by the way, when was this awarded? Uh, on the third, last week. Last week. Evangelina is going to remember. She's not going to remember six months from now, but she'll remember now. So this is why we do exactly what we do. Let me end this poll. Sorry, I forgot I even had that open. And if you have any questions, you can ask some questions because this, this, is, this is a different mindset for pursuing what you want to pursue. Here's one for 97,000, almost 100,000, one offer received for ultrasound training. It fell under this next code, but it's ultrasound. Also fell under this, PSC. If you're not familiar with PSCs, we'll help you with that too. You can also look for keywords. This will help narrow your focus and increase as you use the system, the system learns about you. That was one of the questions. How do we find specific things? That's what the system is designed to do. It's designed to go into it and also provide you with, with additional feeders. Here's one for 20,000. Again, offers received four, 59 thousand offers received two does everybody see the same pattern we just talked about in that whole time one of five question is how do you become one of the five your answer is right here sterling whitehead with fas your answer is right here with leslie with faa your answer for this three hundred thousand dollar award with faa mary higgins Three quarters of a million with OPM. It doesn't matter what the what the office is. It doesn't matter what the agency is. You need something to distill all the contracts and say, I need to talk to these people. Now, these are all awards. They might be saying, you're just calling me a loser. You already lost. You didn't even know it hit the street. The difference is now you can act. You can turn this into a proactive measure and you can push out into the marketplace. This is what we've done for the past 15 years to push out in the marketplace for, for our clients. We've done this exact thing. But what we did it with was a bucket, which we can also get if you want the whole bucket, we can get the bucket. That's 4,500 bucks. Do you want the bucket or would you like to try this? and see what happened yesterday. Pull the thread from yesterday and be able to talk to somebody that awarded something yesterday. This is yesterday, folks. Yesterday. And Pat Filer, if you play in this space for custom computer programming services, 
and you and you might just compete against this small company called IBM and be more agile, that Pat needs to know about you. This is what Sam Radar does. It flips it upside down and puts you in control. And it does, it gets you in the back door. You don't have to talk to an Oz the Boo. You don't have to talk to P Tech. You don't have to talk to anybody. You can talk directly to the buyer because you have the information right here. And if you like, you can reach out to IBM. So for this, you do have to log into the system. Right, Rob? Yes. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, is that, that, that Stark Weather has her hand raised when you get a chance. All right, let's go. Let's get her unmutified. Uh, Annette, go ahead and answer this. Go ahead and ask, ask, ask your question. I'll do my best to do this. Take a look at this, guys, while, while, while we're getting Annette live. You can reach out to the folks at IBM okay. right now if you want to sub. Okay, All I right, Annette, what you got? Hey, we manufacture access control products that use biometrics. We use face and fingerprint recognition. We don't know. I like your question because we don't know uh, what, how much of that kind of equipment the government is going to be interested in. And and you you're talking about access controls? Yes, and we in this we we manufacture biometrics like face and fingerprint recognition, rather than the old fashioned card systems. And, and the answer is absolutely. In fact, we're doing one, we're doing uh, one of the issues with facial recognition and, and, and AI in the process is bias, racial bias. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. There's a briefing coming up. One of our clients is resilient and they have a zero trust solution. So that's one of the things. So they are buying what you sell. They're absolutely doing it. And they're, they're looking to adopt and implement that technology in both both uh, cybersecurity as well as phys uh, physical security. Now, you're probably going to have to go once, you're probably going to have a little bit of homework to do, even in SAM radar. We can't solve all the problems. Everybody get that? We can't solve all the problems. But I, with SAM radar, when you go after these folks, you can start having the conversation with both the, the prime winner as well as the, the buyer, and you also need the program manager. So you've got to get that connectivity to find that to find out that question. But you, the, and then the other way you can do it is gov brief. So we can talk about multiple things, but a, you want to ha start having the dialogue with the people that are doing the buying, right? That's your that's your objective. Does that make sense, Annette? Yes, yes. Uh, however, what you, what you're talking about there buying that's not what we're selling. That we sell stuff that works on doors correct opens, that opens things we know what you're talking about you're, uh, you're no you're talking about physical access is what you're talking about correct yep so there's a whole next code for security and there's pscs for physical access so rob once you so first things first go to go to samradar.com sign up and then you'll you'll have a federal advisor that'll take you right through that process to say where is this physical access? And oh, by the way, you want to use keywords too, right? If you want to use that, you know, facial recognition, you want to do the fingerprints, you want to do, you know, card access, because you're competing against card access too, That's right? right? That's yeah. perfect. Most people don't understand that, but you're just exactly right. Yep. So that's where you want to go. So hopefully that works and that gets signed up and we'll make sure you get, you'll be able to see that within a couple of days, the system will be able to show you exactly that, that whole thing. We'll get you signed up and working. Todd Crane, where are you at? I'm, uh, I'm here. I'm, I'm right, out Todd, of Dallas. What you got? Yeah. So, uh, we're a, a IT and cybersecurity solution, uh, service provider. We're actually not looking for primes. We're looking to subcontract, be subcontractors to help people with their CMMC and, uh, and, uh, NIST, uh, 800-171 compliance. So is, is that something you can help us with or how do we get involved with that? So there's two, there's two things that I would say, two things. Um, I literally just wrote this up this morning for partners with GovBrief. We're looking for partners with GovBrief to push out to industry. So you're talking about pushing to industry, right? Yeah. All right. So that 
let's let's get you on the calendar to talk about that and that process that we have with GovBrief. And then the other part of it is, I would be monitoring Sam, Sam Radar the same exact way so that you can, because if they win a contract, right? If they won yeah. a contract, they need to be compliant, right? Yeah. And they need to maintain that compliance, right, Todd? Yeah, absolutely. So so both of those require third-party author, not third-party, audits, right? You have third-party yeah. audits. Is that what, do you do that as well? I uh, We're scheduled to be certified with that here in uh, February. Fantastic. So, so that is exactly, so monitoring that and being able to turn that into your pitch to say, hey, you just won this yesterday. Want to make sure you know, hey, this is what we do. We can help make sure that you're you're compliant because one of the biggest problems that in, in cyber, <laughs> so everybody knows who, who's in cyber, guess, or, or in anything that's IT or ties it or, or even working as a federal prime at all, you're all of the restrictions and regulations that are put on the prime get driven down to all the subs and the weakest link in cybersecurity is the biggest problem. Right, Todd? I, I used to, I used to work, I used to do uh, embedded cyber for Raytheon. And so we, that was a big issue that we had is that who can we contract out to that can check these boxes. And so and, that was a huge thing. I know there's a absolutely huge market one that's even underestimated by the by the massive primes. Yeah. And we're just where I'm trying to fill that need, but I'm trying to get in that market. And there's it's trying to get uh everyone, everyone involved to know who I who we are to so you have a brand, you have brand building that you need to do. That's that's Gov Brief. We'll talk about that. So uh, Rob, make sure that we get with Todd on that on Gov Brief. Got and it. the second and the second thing is for for being able to do this to be able to be proactive with with a narrowed down search function right so you use sam radar for that side and right. um, we can we can do some magic on the back end to happy help, help you with that so that we can enhance enhance those and make sure that the system knows what is really valuable from the prime side so you don't even care about the buyers right no you i don't care, care about, at all driver you don't care I mean, about that don't get me wrong i i've i have a lot of input that i can add because i've I've worked with buyers before. Right, right on. And what and there's a lot of people here probably that don't understand how much um how much the the people that win the contracts actually um work on the actual contracts themselves. Um I've actually worked on contracts for government agencies while I was a buyer. And wow. so see? So and and did, was there anything that we said that wasn't hundred percent on today, Todd? I don't think you're you're driving it home enough. <laughs> like like I I mean we I I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars of government money arguing like I've spent an hour arguing one point with the government trying to help them save another ten hours on their own side. Like it is, it, it's crazy because a lot of the times the, these development contracts, especially development contracts. You know, uh, the the government is buying your or your being your your the, the, the folks here, the folks here. Yeah, right. they're they're buying they're buying the audiences the services to fulfill another government obligation. So mm -hmm. it's 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 um, contract for hire. So you're so they're, they're the one government agency is bringing you in to fulfill an obligation they have to another government agency and so it, it's all there's this big kind of <laughs> jumbled up mess it is that you really it's so nuanced and so you know intricate that you really need somebody there's a lot of people that really need your help understanding mm -hmm. how nuanced it is how intricate it is because it's so there's so many landmines there's different what we used to call colors of money where you can use one right like engineering services versus engineering money there's all different kinds of contracts that you have to use and if you mess it up you can land yourself in jail or you don't do an export thing right you can land up in jail and so many or or even <laughs> i would argue even worse you can end up excluded yeah, they, <laughs> being excluded is worse than being in jail okay i'll buy that so, and, so real quick there, there's so, a lot of people on, i think on here that don't understand what being excluded means and so yeah there's and that's that's after you're in 
you yeah. you wind up being excluded. So real quick for you, Todd, one of the things you want to do is you want to track this prime. Uh, so when you go in here, after you sign up, you'll be able to track the vendor. So every time that vendor gets an award, you know. All right. Right. So okay. it's real important that the, the focus is always, always most intense around your competitors or for you, the industry that you want to serve that are serving the gubbies. Right. So those, yeah. for you, it's it's twofold. But really, because you want you want to continue to pay attention and that gives you that gives you relevance to the prime. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest problems we all have is relevance because Pat, if you're trying, let me just say this real quick, as we still got a few people here, this person here, let me annotate this. Either. I can't annotate. What the heck? I don't understand. Anyway, you want to reach out to Pat or you want to reach out to the prime real important. You need to be relevant to both of those. Either one of those people, you have to have relevance of why they should talk to you. And if here you just reach out and you say, contact the buyer and say, I want to talk to you about what you just did with IBM on the 7th. That's the context. First of all, Pat knows IBM. We know this. And oh, by the way, Todd, you may want, you want, you may want Pat to tell you who to talk to at IBM, because I don't know if you know this, but they have more than four people that work for them. Yeah. <laughs> really? Right? Yeah. And and maybe we don't know. So you know, we don't know everything. And I don't even claim to it. But to your point, the 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 spider web that happens and the confusion that happens is what we're trying to solve. And we know somebody, Pat knows the somebody that you want to talk to at IBM. Oh, absolutely. And that is a painless, painless referral. Absolutely. Because if you're if you're asking her to, hey, I want you to introduce me to your boss, no chance. I ask you to introduce me to the program manager on this, maybe. But if you ask for the, the person that you're working with with IBM, no sweat. So you have the ability to do that. Ultimately, real important for everybody to know, you have the ability to track and stalk your competition so that you can steal their contacts. Who's the contact for IBM? Pat is the contact for IBM. How do you mm -hmm. know that? Because I know. And guess what? This is on a $2.4 million contract that they just executed 732,000. And yes, you could sub or you could provide services like Todd. And There's a lot of reasons why this works, right if Todd? I, if I can jump in real quick. I, I worked on some engineering services contracts. Some, uh, so, so for example, one of, the main, one of my main contracts was for Stinger. Stinger is older than I am. Let me just put that out there. The people that were involved on the government side knew me by name. If you reached out for somebody who wanted somebody, you reached out for somebody who needed cyber or whatever, they would literally give you my email address. And I was, <laughs> well, I was with Raytheon. Like it's, there's no competition because once those contracts are sealed, they're sealed. I mean, nobody's, the government's not going to recompete Stinger. You know, Singer is a missile that, like I said, literally is older than I am. And so it's one of those things that, you know, it's it's embedded into the DNA of these of these uh, relationships. And so if you have if you have any questions or if you wanted to do business with Raytheon or especially with Stinger, reach out. If you if you watch, uh, I think their, their new name is Shield um, for the uh, uh, buying organization. Um, in Huntsville, Alabama, uh -huh. that, that, that bought the you know that the, the army organization that that made Singer. that's funny that shield for all the Marvel people out here. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh there there was many jokes. Uh, I guarantee it. <laughs> but uh, I guarantee but, it. Along with space force, you know, right? even even today, if you were to if you were to reach out to Shield and say you know hey, you know I I heard about Todd and Cyber, they would probably still know who I am. That's awesome, man. Because of how long lived these relationships are. So, so I really want to kind of double down on what you're saying is that these are really valuable relationships you can build here. I agree with you. And do I know you, Todd? Not yet. But uh, I will. Not yet. Not yet. But, but we're going to. I, I, we're I going to. Impression. I love it. So real quick, uh, the what what Sally mentioned, and here's the here's the testimonial for share, for share. You can go to samradar.com. You can hear the testimonial right out of her mouth. Of, of of what happened in September. Uh, you can see other things here, but most importantly, you can do the free trial. It takes you right here. 
And guess what? This is half price. And this is changing soon. Because once once we once we hit our once we hit our metric and our metric is 250 and we are fast approaching 250, this price is going to change like that. It's not going to be locked in anymore. This is the time where we are in this with you. We are building relationships with you. And we have a Monday roundtable where we talk about how we can use this information to crack the code. You want to crack the code, incumbents want you to ignore everything that I just said. They wanted, they want you to stay away from the, all this information. They don't want you to know because it gives you an unfair advantage. And the guy that made that up is sitting right here because he used to use the system selling LEDs, didn't you, Rob? I certainly did. And what was the first thing that you said when you saw it? Is this legal? Is this <laughs> legal? Can you actually get this? Uh -huh. And the answer is Absolutely. So do yourself a favor. And it, when, once you're on board, uh, by the way, you get the, you sign up and I'll, and I'll send you the, I'll send you the uh, reports for free. That's the first thing. And I don't care if you stay or not, but you're going to stay because you're going to want to stay. However, this is a process that is not just looking for opportunities. If you just want opportunities, that's included too. And guess what it does? It tells you as soon as it hits sam.gov, so you don't have to go looking for it. You don't even have to log in to sam.gov to see this opportunity because it pops up just like this. And you can go right here and see this is Noah that just released this for janitorial services. And oh, by the way, when is it due? 11 17. And it's a total small business set aside that landed at 1205 while you're talking to me. Folks, that's the 2%. So we give you the 100%. You get 100% coverage with it. You get that for free right now when you sign up because that is part of the process that you need in order to skin this cat. And like Todd said, it's not easy. There's a lot of spider webs that go everywhere. Listen to me. Listen to me. Pay attention one second. Let this system do the work so that you can build the relationships with the people that it reveals to you. Train the system like you would anybody else to do really high level review and intelligence and analytics in your market. That's what you want. So with that, I got to let everybody go because I got to get on this other briefing. If you would like, hold on, I got one more poll. If you want the free next report, you're going to schedule it. You're either going to sign up with samradar.com or you're going to schedule a time with Rob and just let me know. And if you don't want to do it right now, that's okay. Let Rob, we'll let Rob know when you're ready. That's okay. Just know the system is ready for you today. Number one. Number two, by tomorrow, you will have action items on who you should be following up with. And within seven days, you're going to have at least five leads. Five leads at least five so that's my commitment to you and we'll make sure that that happens right rob you got it you got it all right so there you go we got we got a bunch of folks that want this thanks for sticking around i know that you have plenty of things to do todd thanks for the impromptu we're going to be doing something together i can feel it i know i know that you know what you're doing and there's people that has to hear your story especially and I, and I think on the controls that we talked about with, with Annette, um, exactly right. We're, there's ways to be able to skin that cat and we want to help you do it. I'm so, I cannot tell you how excited I am to be with you guys and the folks that are signing up because guess what? We are changing this world. We're going to flip it upside down and we're going to make sure you get to where you want to go. Right, Rob? You got it. We're here. Please. All right, guys. Please. Anything, any last minute things? Wins, you're awesome. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate that. Thanks for the props on the input. We will see you guys next month, if not sooner, because I know I'm going to be talking to Todd sooner. And anybody else that just said the 26 to 20 people that said they're signing up, you guys, we're going to be talking to you a lot sooner because you guys are going to be getting the email templates and everything else that you need to start your engagement right away. So we'll get you guys cooking. All right, guys, I got to jump. If you want to join me Thanks, uh, everybody. for everything, uh, for if you want to, if you want to know about white papers, 
you can i don't know where that link went but we'll um <laughs> you're welcome mike michael if you want if you want if you want to join me for white papers go to gov brief and ask for it we'll get, make sure you get it all right amy there you go love it amy appreciate it sally you're awesome thanks for thanks for being here and we'll uh we'll make sure we we keep things cooking all right i'm going to end this poll in five four it's going to be last chance three two one any last second last seconds no all right Rob, you got 20 people you got to talk to in the next 15 minutes. I got nine appointments set up already. So <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Talk to you on Monday. All right. You're welcome, Jonas. See you guys.